Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 16. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book, and we're in chapter 5. Hey, last video we had an epic video about cell references. This video we want to talk about relative, absolute, and mixed cell ranges instead of individual cell references like last video. We're going to do whole ranges, and we've got to have our first look at adding with two criteria. Here's our workbook, Excel is Fun start, vi uh, start File. You can download it from the link below the video. We are going to start on sheet number CR7. Now here's our situation. We're, we need to add all of the sales for Tina. Now we've already done this a couple times already using the sum ifs function. Now in those earlier videos when we did this, we only did it in a single cell. We want to create a single formula and copy it down the column. So just as we saw last video when we learned how to lock cell references or create absolute cell references, uh, we're going to do the same thing here but for an, a whole range of values. Well, let's start our formula equals, then we're going to use our sum ifs. Now I still like the sum ifs. The sum if would work in this situation, but I love the sum ifs because especially when you're learning, the names of these screen tips are much easier to understand. So if I click right here, sum range, well, that's the range I want to add. So I'm going to click in this top cell and I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut, control shift down arrow. And then guess what? The screen jumped way down, but we need to lock that range. So we hit the F4 key, but watch this. F4 not only puts the dollar signs into the sum range, but it actually jumps the screen back up. Now, we're going to copy this down the column. So we actually only need the dollar signs in front of what? Well, copying these cell reference down, if we want them locked, then it's the numbers that need it. So I'm going to hit the F4. So notice, when you hit the F4 key, after putting a range in like this. It works just like the cell references we saw in our last video. So dollar sign in front of each one of the row reference 2 and 19. Boom, when we copy it down, it will be locked. Comma, the criteria range. Well, that's going to be, since we're looking up sales rep, this one. Con click there, control shift down arrow, and then F4. F4 puts the two dollar signs in and jumps the screen back up and I'm going to hit F4 one more time so that I have just in front of the row reference. Now I'm going to type a comma and the criteria one is this one right here. That's a relative cell reference so as we copy down it'll move to Sheila and then Bob. Close parentheses and that's it. That formula will work. Control enter and then double click and send it down. See that little angry rabbit? Double click and send it down. All right, I'm going to come to this uh, last range here and hit F2. Looks like it's working just fine. You can even see the blue outline there and the green outline there. So we know those locked and one cell to my left. Absolutely perfect. All right, now let's look at another example. Here we did adding with one criteria, right? So the way the sum ifs works when we have one criteria is it just goes down here. Every time it sees a Sheila, it jumps over and gets that. Look and look and look and look at. Oh, there's another Sheila, so it gets that one. Sheila gets that one. Sheila gets that one, etc., until it finds all of them and it adds them. One criteria. Now let's go see a two criteria example for our sum ifs. I'm going to scroll down. Actually, our table is over here. So let's see how adding with two criteria works. And actually, we've already talked a little bit about this when we did our pivot table. So this will be similar to a pivot table, except for we'll do it with formulas. Now later when we go to our data analysis chapter and talk about pivot tables in great detail, I'll actually compare and contrast formulas. But the one thing I'll say here is, even though we could build this exact same table with a pivot table more quickly than a formula. The one advantage to formulas is that they update. So if you have data that's changing, meaning the formula inputs are changing, sometimes formulas are a little bit more convenient. All right, so adding with two criteria. We want to add for this cell right here, there's the row header Carlota and the column header Midwest. So one, two criteria. Ah, I just noticed something here over in our data set. 
that column is not wide enough. So I'm going to come here when I see my cursor between the F and the G. I'm going to double click. All right, units. Now back over here, product, region. And there's going to be a third column or field over here that we have to look at. The thing we're adding are sales. All right? So sales is one of the columns we have to look through. Product is another one and region. Now I've highlighted this just to help us understand how adding with two criteria works. All right, Carlota, Midwest, and then add. So it comes over here, it looks down here, Carlota, no, Carlota, actually not no, but false, 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 true, right? So it gets a true and then it goes false, false, false. Oh, there's a true. As soon as it sees a true here and here, it jumps over and puts this into its memory. Then it goes down looking, looking, false, 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 false. Oh, true. False, 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 false. True. Two trues means that it gets it. Again, ding, ding, true, true. So it goes over and gets it. And it continues all the way down the data set doing that. Now that'll become important to understand actually how Excel can look through two columns. And every time it finds two trues, it jumps over and gets the number. That'll be important later when we do array formulas. We don't really have to explicitly understand that to use this formula over here, but it helps. All right, now I'm going to blow this way up because we're going to do a couple things. We're going to do adding with two criteria, and we're going to see a bunch of different cell references in one formulas. And guess what? This formula will have cell references and cell ranges. All right, I'm going to start in the cell up in the corner, equals some ifs. All right, the sum range. So I need to go over and get the sum range. By the way, look at that. Uh, that's just a rail a pound sign that means the column is not wide enough. It's just formatting or just an error. The number is still in the cell. I'm going to click in that cell, Control Shift Down Arrow. Now, what's great about Control Shift Down Arrow is then you can hit the F4 key. Not only does it put the dollar signs in, but it jumps the screen back in view. Now, when I copy down, and over. Every single one of these cells has to look at that whole range. So two dollar signs, column and row reference for both cell reference, absolutely perfect. All right, now comma, criteria range. Well, we could pick either one we want first. I'm going to pick product. So I'm going to scroll over, click in the top one, control shift down arrow to highlight all that, and F4 to lock it. Well, look at this. This too, every single cell needs to always be looking at that column locked in both directions. Comma. Now the criteria. Well, criteria range one was product, so criteria one has to be product. Now this is a for our table. It's a row header. All right. Now when we copy it down, zoop, 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 do we want it locked on that sunshine product? which is the name of a boomerang, by the way. Or do we want it to move to Carlota, and then Sunset, and then Quad, all names of, of boomerang products? We want it to move when we go down across the numbers, the row. So I'm not going to put a dollar sign in front of the number. Now, what about when we go from east column to midwest, and then west and south? Do we want it to move relatively, or do we want everything in this row to be locked on the row header, which is the criteria for um, what to add. We want it locked. Copying across the columns or letters, so I hit F4 three times to put the dollar sign in front of the column reference. All right, now I'm going to, and notice the formulas hanging out. Sometimes this is dangerous to click over here because you might accidentally click in a cell and wreck your formula. In that case, it's better to come up to the formula bar and click. Now, for the video, I'm going to click right here very carefully just so we keep it there comma, I type a comma in criteria range 2. Now we got to get the region. So I scroll over using my horizontal scroll bar. Region, I click in the first cell, control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. Now this one also, down and over, every single cell has to look at that same column. Criteria range 2, comma, and then criteria 2. We click right there. When I copy down, across the numbers. Do I want it locked on east, or do I want it to move as a relative cell reference? I want it locked. Every single formula in this column 
needs to be looking at E, so I'm going to hit F4 one, two times, lock the number. Copying it across the numbers, I want it locked, dollar sign in front of the number. Now, when I copy from the K column to the L column, meaning bloop, 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 do I want it locked on east or do I want that green box to move to Midwest and then to west and then to south? I want it to move. So no dollar sign in front of the column reference. All right, close parentheses. Notice we had a situation where our formula was using formula inputs from the column headers and the row headers, right? If you have that situation, then you can use mixed cell references. Let's go ahead and control enter, double click and send it down, two step process and then click and drag. I'm going to jump to this corner diagonally further cell away to audit it. Control period period and then F2. Wow, look at that. So the formula is not quite on the screen, so I'm going to uh, use my horizontal scroll bar over here. That one's correct. You can even scroll over and see blue box still in the right place, brown box still in the right place, or uh, and green one still in the right place. The lavender purple one, perfect, and the green one, absolutely perfect. Is that not amazing? All right, I'm going to click Escape. Now I'm going to click here and hit F2. Now, last couple of this last couple examples in this video and last video, we had row headers and column headers, and we were allowed to use mixed cell reference. Now, in our next video on this assumption sheet, we are going to see how what happens when the actual formula inputs are not directly at the top of the column or the front of the row and and if they're not how do you set them up in some other part of the spreadsheet so you're allowed to use mixed cell references before we get to that next video though we want to do some homework to practice our uh, cell references this is the workbook uh, on sheet uh, chapter 5 155 to 184 we're gonna have 33 to 77 it's actually who not 33 34 so, and then there's, there's actually each, of these, some of these problems are, take a little bit of doing. There's that one, there's the answer, there's this one, the answer, this one, answer, this one, and the answer. This is the, all of these are practice for cell references, different types of cell references. All right, we'll see you next video.